Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we are going to talk through The Great Mental Models Volume 1 General Thinking Concepts by Rhiannon Bobine and Shane Parrish, published in 2018. Education did not prepare the author for the challenges of the real world, particularly after the events of September 11, 2001. In search of guidance and mentorship, the author discovered Charlie Munger, the business partner of Warren Buffett, who offered valuable insights on decision-making. Inspired by Munger's approach, the author began studying mental models and created a website to share his learnings. He realized the need for a comprehensive book on mental models and their practical applications, leading to the creation of this series. This first volume focuses on general thinking concepts and their utility in understanding and solving problems. The book emphasizes the importance of understanding reality, avoiding blind spots, and developing a multi-dimensional perspective to improve decision-making. Bobine and Parrish highlight three flaws in our thinking that hinder our ability to make optimal decisions, perception, ego, and distance. Our perception is limited, and we must be open to other perspectives to gain a more complete understanding of the world. Ego often prevents us from accepting criticism or updating our beliefs, leading to ignorance. Distance from the consequences of our decisions allows us to hold on to outdated views instead of updating them. To overcome these flaws, we need to stay grounded and seek feedback from the world around us. The writers also emphasize the importance of understanding reality through mental models that help us anticipate and explain events. However, not all models are reliable, and we must discard or update flawed models to improve our thinking. It is important to have a multidisciplinary mindset and understanding different models in order to accurately solve problems. The writers emphasize the need to overcome blind spots by looking at situations from various perspectives. The book compares this to blind men trying to describe an elephant, with each person only able to see and understand a part of the whole. It also discusses the concept of mental models and the latticework of knowledge, emphasizing the value of interconnected knowledge and the ability to apply different models in different situations. Using mental models may not always result in the best solution immediately, but with practice and reflection, it can lead to better decision-making and a more comprehensive understanding of the world. Maps and models are useful tools for navigating the complexity of reality, but we must remember that they are abstractions and not the actual territory. Just like a map cannot capture all the details of a place, our knowledge and understanding based on abstractions can be limited. When we mistake the map for reality, we run into problems and make bad decisions. Maps and models need to be flexible and adaptable to handle the constantly changing world. We must also be aware of the limitations of maps and models and constantly update them based on new experiences and information. Lastly, we should consider the intentions and biases of the creators of maps and models, as they can influence how territories are portrayed. Using maps or models is necessary to simplify and navigate the world around us. However, it is important to remember that maps and models are flawed and can only provide a limited understanding of reality. One example is the model of management, which has evolved over time as new theories emerged to address the complexities of different settings and motivations. Maps, like models, condense information and help us make decisions, but they can never fully capture the intricacies of a territory. Understanding our circle of competence is crucial for making effective decisions. It requires deep knowledge and experience within a specific domain. Building and maintaining a circle of competence involves continuous learning, monitoring our progress, seeking feedback from others, and recognizing when we are operating outside of our expertise. When we find ourselves in a situation outside of our circle of competence, there are strategies we can employ to navigate effectively. The first step is to learn the basics of the realm we're operating in and acknowledge that we are strangers, not experts. It is also important to seek advice from individuals who have a strong circle of competence in that area. Asking thoughtful and detailed questions can help us learn how to navigate the situation ourselves. Additionally, having a broad understanding of the basic mental models of the world can aid in identifying foundational concepts that are most useful in unfamiliar fields. It is crucial to remember that it is impossible for our circles of competence to encompass everything, 
so we must be comfortable operating outside of them. Furthermore, when receiving advice, it is important to consider the incentives of the person providing it. In the financial realm, for example, it is essential to understand the compensation arrangements of advisors to make informed decisions. In summary, being aware of our circle of competence, seeking advice, and leveraging our understanding of foundational concepts can help us navigate unfamiliar territories effectively. First principles are the fundamental truths or assumptions that we use to build our knowledge and understanding of various situations. They can vary depending on the context and can be established through techniques like Socratic questioning and the five whys. Socratic questioning involves challenging assumptions, seeking evidence, considering alternative perspectives, and examining consequences. The five whys is a method of repeatedly asking why to delve into a statement or concept and identify first principles. These techniques help us break free from traditional thinking and dogma, allowing us to think critically and understand the underlying principles that govern a situation. First principles thinking can lead to paradigm shifts and breakthrough innovations by challenging assumptions and understanding the core principles involved. As demonstrated by examples such as the discovery of bacteria causing stomach ulcers and the development of artificial meat, reasoning from first principles can lead to significant advancements and improvements. Overall, first principles thinking allows us to question the status quo, think creatively, and make informed decisions based on foundational truths. The ability to conduct thought experiments is a powerful tool of the human brain. It allows us to explore situations from various angles that we cannot physically examine and test in real life. Thought experiments require rigor, similar to traditional experiments, and follow steps such as asking a question, conducting background research, constructing a hypothesis, testing with experiments, analyzing outcomes, and drawing conclusions. Thought experiments are used in various ways, including imagining physical impossibilities, reimagining history, and intuiting the non-intuitive. They help us find insights, solve problems, and better understand the limits of our knowledge. However, caution must be exercised when using thought experiments to explore counterfactual historical scenarios, as small changes can lead to unpredictable outcomes due to the chaotic nature of history. Overall, thought experiments allow us to delve into different possibilities and gain valuable insights. Bobine and Parrish explore the concept of second-order thinking and its importance in decision-making. Second-order thinking involves considering the consequences and effects of actions beyond the immediate results. By thinking holistically and considering both the first-order and second-order effects, individuals can make more informed decisions and avoid potential disasters. The writers provide examples of second-order thinking in various contexts, such as the unintended consequences of antibiotic use in livestock and the decision-making process of Cleopatra. They emphasize the need to prioritize long-term interests over immediate gains and the importance of building trust through considering the effects of actions on others. Overall, second-order thinking allows individuals to anticipate and navigate complex relationships and potential outcomes. Second-order thinking involves considering the consequences and second-order effects of our actions beyond the immediate outcomes this type of thinking is demonstrated by the philosopher Mary Wollstonecraft, who argued for women's rights not only based on the empowerment of women, but also on the positive impacts it would have on society. Probabilistic thinking, on the other hand, involves estimating the likelihood of specific outcomes based on available information. While Bayesian thinking, which involves using prior knowledge and updating it with new information to make decisions, the author also discusses the concept of fat-tailed curves, which represent the likelihood of extreme events occurring, and the importance of understanding asymmetries in probability estimates. Overall, the author emphasizes the need to consider consequences, understand probabilities, and be aware of the limitations and uncertainties in decision-making. Next, Bobine and Parrish discusses the concept of probabilistic thinking and its importance in decision-making. Humans tend to overestimate their confidence in their probabilistic estimates, leading to errors and misjudgments. They also introduces the idea of antifragility, where certain things benefit from volatility and unpredictability. 
I instead of trying to predict the future, it is more effective to prepare for different outcomes. They provides examples of how to prepare for uncertainty, such as seeking out opportunities and learning from failures. Bobine and Parrish then discusses the use of probabilistic thinking in espionage and insurance industries. The chapter concludes by discussing the difference between causation and correlation, emphasizing the need to understand these concepts to make accurate decisions. Bobine and Parrish discuss the concept of regression to the mean and its implications for causation. They highlight that how media and even trained scientists often fail to recognize this phenomenon. An example from Daniel Kahneman's book, Thinking Fast and Slow, is provided, where depressed children treated with an energy drink show significant improvement over time. The writers explain that these improvements may not be solely due to the treatment itself, but rather because depressed children are an extreme group that naturally tend to regress to the mean over time. They emphasizes the importance of control groups in research to determine if the treated group improves more than what regression can explain. They then introduce the concept of inversion as a thinking tool to identify and remove obstacles to success, and provide examples of how inversion has been used in various fields such as mathematics, marketing, and personal finance. They mention the force field analysis technique developed by psychologist Kurt Lewin, which involves applying inversion to identify obstacles to change and strategize solutions. Florence Nightingale, the founder of Modern Nursing, used statistics to improve the sanitary conditions in army hospitals during the Crimean War. By collecting detailed data, Nightingale was able to identify that poor sanitation was the main cause of death for soldiers. She presented this information using a polar area chart, a new way of visualizing data at the time. Nightingale's use of statistics helped not only in improving outcomes, but also in preventing future problems. She advocated for the use of statistics to identify and solve problems before they occurred. This approach can be seen as an example of applied inversion, where one works backward from a goal to find innovative solutions. Inversion can also be used to simplify complex problems and identify the simplest explanation, as demonstrated by Occam's razor. Occam's razor states that simpler explanations are more likely to be true than complicated ones. By selecting the simplest explanation with the fewest moving parts, we can make decisions more confidently and avoid unnecessary complexity. The authors highlight the importance of applying this principle in various scenarios, such as medical diagnoses and leadership decisions. They also introduced Hanlon's razor, which suggests that one should not attribute to malice what can be explained by stupidity. Assuming the worst intentions in others can lead to paranoia and hinder problem solving. Examples are provided, such as the case of Vasily Arkhipov, who prevented nuclear war during the Cuban Missile Crisis by not assuming malice. The writers conclude by emphasizing the need to recognize the prevalence of human error and to approach situations with understanding rather than assuming the worst. Thank you so much for watching this video, your support means the world to us. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. We'll see you in the next video.